Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of the Middle Mac Movie Podcast, starring Seth McCrary and Nathan Middlebrooks. I am Nathan. And I am Seth. And today we are talking about the first movie in a series, or a trilogy to be specific, of the Planet of the Apes trilogy. And believe it or not, for our first episode, we actually uh, managed to nab a sponsor. I'm not sure how. Uh, no one really knows about this podcast, but they reached out to us and said, Hey, we saw your search history. We saw you were looking up monkeys. So how about we sponsor you? So uh, our sponsor today is Orangatape. Orangatape. It, it sticks to things like monkeys. When tape, when regular tape can't do the job, you can depend on Oranga tape. Yeah, it, it'll make you go bananas for adhesive. Please, please do not go actually searching Oranga tape. It's, it's, it's not real. Sorry. All right, but no, maybe if we get big enough, we can make ourselves Oranga. Maybe tape. we can make ourselves Oranga tape. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So I have seen these movies several times, whereas Seth here is uh these are new to him so he's a first time watcher i mean you saw part of the first one a little bit yeah i think i've seen bits and pieces of every single one Mm -hmm. but i've never seen the whole thing okay so um describe like after we watched it last week just general thoughts what did you think about it i thought it was a good movie um i think um i really liked the caesar's progression through the movie Mm -hmm. i like how they handled it like, you know, the monkeys weren't just straight up evil to begin with. It mm-hmm. was really our fault. Yeah. You know, the humans. Like, because in the original one, it's like the gorillas are evil. Mm-hmm. And they were mainly gorillas in the original. But, but yeah, um, I liked Caesar's progression. Uh, my man, Rocket, he was pretty awesome in the movie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. At first, I didn't like him, but he really pulled around for me. Caesar, but uh, I really liked the the CGI was pretty really good, I think. Especially for 2000. Yeah, for like 10 years ago now, I think. Jeez. Yeah, it's pretty good. And uh, I really liked uh, the performance by Andy Serkis. Mm-hmm. As you pointed out, it's probably his best work. Uh, do you like it better than you like... I know you're... I mean, you are both big Loader fans here, so do you prefer Gollum, like, since you grew up with that, or do you real, do you like uh, Caesar here more? Well, I mean, I hate Gollum, the character, so <laughs> I, I think I'm going to go with Caesar. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not... I mean. Not that I'm well, saying... Well, plus you get more time with Caesar, I feel like. Yeah. Whereas Gollum, it's like, you get a scene where it's like who he was before, before he goes right back to being evil again. Uh-huh. I mean, not saying that, like, Gollum is a likable character. It's just him being, like, such a pivotal character yeah. in our in our childhood. Like, you know, Lord of the Rings wouldn't be the same without, like, Andy Serkis playing Gollum. Well, yeah, you can't have Lord of the Rings without uh, Gollum. Gollum in it, yeah. or Sauron would have won. Yeah. But he, this he, is not a Lord of the Rings yeah, no, movie this review. Is, this, this, is, uh, this is a Rise of the Planet of the Apes <laughs> video or podcast. By the way, warning, that will probably happen very often. Yeah, we're, we're going to try our best to stay on topic here. But um, but I think uh, the human actors, the people. Well, I said human actors. They're all, but the people <laughs> who played the humans in the movie, they were serviceable enough. Mm-hmm. They did a, a good enough job. I wouldn't say any of them are Oscar worthy, but uh, they all did a good enough job for the James movie. James Franco know? trying his best <laughs> to <laughs> look <laughs> like a nerd. Yeah, try to look like a doctor, I guess. Yeah, or a scientist, whatever. Same difference. Trying his best to sound like an absolute nerd. And uh, his girlfriend in the movie was good. Nathan. I don't know if you know. Do you remember her name, though? <laughs> it doesn't matter. You see, that's the, <laughs> that's the thing. I'm the, the humans are not the main focus, and I am happy. I even know the guy's name. The bad guy's name is like Jacobson or Jacobs, it, the boss. Was, let's see. Was it was it Irons? No, was it? No. I, should, I think I might have Jacobson? a Jacobson? I don't, I don't know. But, um, but, yeah, like, they're all pretty surface level characters i think will you know franco he obviously gets the most depth out of it but um they put enough heart and soul into the human stuff to make you understand them like uh will's trying to find a cure for his dad's alzheimer's which is something that a lot of people can relate to that you know oh you know i wish this thing were real and you know they go desperately searching for it but at least they give him that little bit of character you know, motivation yeah. and depth to help 
secure his place but not make him the main focus. It also brings up a big question that people would have in real life. Like, would you be willing to try an experimental drug Mm -hmm. for somebody that you know that's dying of a disease? Yeah. You know, it's like the dilemma. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't know what it'll do to a person because monkeys and humans are different. Or sorry, forgive me. Apes. Yeah. And humans are so different. But I guess it's the closest thing we have to a human anatomy that we can experiment with. Yeah. Unless yeah, people willingly are like, here, I give myself to be tested on, you know? I, I doubt many people actually do that, though. But there are some. But, um, I like, I like the idea, like, I think, I don't know if it, I think it was explored in the original Planet of the Apes movies. I think there were originally five set in that old timeline. That it was the humans' fault for making the apes go against them, and uh, I'm just uh, I forgot to mention we're gonna be spoiling. Oh, sorry, uh, we're yeah. gonna be spoiling. It's ten um, years old, and if we're talking about the original, it's like sixty years old. So you've yeah. had time. Yeah. So, um, basically, I mean, just just go and watch them for yourselves. They're, they're actually really great movies. Sorry, I hit the mic. Oh, that's good. But just go watch them for yourselves, and. Uh, you know, just form your own opinions. I definitely recommend them. It's not like they're the most groundbreaking movies, but they're they're fun. They're really good. That's what I would say. They're like they're fun movies mm-hmm. with you know a pretty good like heart and soul in it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I won't say it's like well, like before, it's like not Lord like of the Rings. It's not like you know Endgame or Lord of the Rings or anything no. like that. But it's a good time. Yeah, I like how I heard this one guy say it's like. In the original Planet of the Apes, we knew the why of why they did it, but how did it happen, you know? And and I think that's a really interesting perspective because, like, honestly, like, and having that character development in Caesar and having him set off the story, it really makes it more believable because it's a hard time it's it's kind of hard to take a movie about apes becoming sentient and like intelligent taking over the world seriously you know that can be pretty freaking difficult yeah but i think they did a good job yeah of it this time i mean it's like any movie that's like before 1970 mm-hmm. it's gonna be a little bit cheesy mm-hmm. you know a little bit funny but uh, I'll say this one. This one to me was a lot more interesting than the original one I watched. Mm-hmm. So it's funny. I've seen all five of the original ones, right? Really? Uh, okay. But uh, I've never seen any of these. So uh, okay. Apparently, I watched the wrong ones. <laughs> I'm an old timer. But um, yeah, compared to like they, I feel like they took a. Um, I mean, the original Planet of the Apes was already kind of eerie with like how like creepy it was, like with how these. I mean, for the time, the prosthetics and everything to make the uh, humans look like apes were really good, but they were kind of offsetting and kind of creepy. And it was a creepy world to imagine, oh, hey, what if, you know, we became the, uh, you know, the prey instead of, like, you know, the hunter, the the alpha creatures of the world. Yeah, it's like, what if we were enslaved and and put in cages instead of us putting the apes in cages? Uh Uh-huh. Plus, I think the, uh, the design for them, I can't. I don't have confirmation on this, mm-hmm. but they're supposed to look like the halfway point between mm-hmm. a monkey and a man on the evolutionary scale. Mm-hmm. That's why they look that way, I think. Oh, okay. Well, that that makes sense. But um, this takes that kind of bizarre concept and makes it believable. Like, it's not like they start speaking or anything right off the bat. It's like these apes, and I like how they set it up that some of them were already in labs and experimented on, and like yeah, our man, uh, Koba. Koba, yeah, Koba, yeah. He was he was already a lab monkey, so he was already pretty smart. He's Sorry, ape. The Micah Bell of the apes. Yeah, for real. But um, they set up these different apes with different motivations and different explanations to why some of them are already really smart, and then the ALZ virus ends up boosting their uh mental capacity but the but the second strain ends up you know screwing over the human race yeah i think it's like alz 27 was uh, the first see, the one first, the first one was the 112 and the second was oh the yeah the 113 that's right yeah i forgot the 112 did actually help with the alzheimer's but it it but the since, body had a natural response to it being a virus yeah since it's a virus 
it was, you know, it's still technically identified as harmful to the body. And the antibodies killed it. Yeah. So, and then the 113 just ended up being like a failure, pretty much. Yeah, it made the m- monkey, I'm sorry, I keep saying that. It makes the apes very intelligent, mm-hmm. but it kills most of us. And, and I think I just realized this. I think the reason it, it was such a failure, the 113, is because, um, you know, Will wasn't actually there to work on it. Remember, he was like, I quit. Yeah. So, the scientists went ahead and started working on it, and... I don't think they had the guy that originally founded the whole project there to actually tell them what was working and what wasn't. And, you know, that poor scientist who got his mask ripped off by Koba, you know, he ended up... Koba knew what he was doing. Yeah. Well, maybe. I don't know. He seemed kind of out of it. (laughs) But, uh, yeah. Well, plus, probably, it's kind of like Cyberpunk 2077. They probably rushed... The project, yeah. yeah, and it ended terribly. <laughs> no, we're saving that for the gaming cast. Oh, I'm later. sorry, <laughs> forgive me. Well, we'll get to that when you actually play it, so we can talk about it. Yeah, sometime in the future. <laughs> yeah, in 2077, it'll probably be finished, and I can actually play it. Yeah, for real. You think that's the biggest joke that's gonna be? They intentionally made it bad so they can fix it by 2077. By then, Cyberpunk 20, like. More like 40 Cyberpunk 2177 will be out. And we'll be dead. <laughs> you don't know. They might have some technology that makes us live longer. Maybe. I don't know. I don't Wouldn't that know. suck? It's like, hey, you can hey, live to be 900 now. If it's anything like the actual Cyberpunk timeline, you know, by now te- uh, the, t- the, the technology should already be advancing to the point where we have cybernetics. We can't. I mean, well, I know we don't have we're, like we're that tw- kind of we're cybernetics. We're in the twenty twenties right now, so you know Johnny Silverhand was already a guy. He had a cybernetic arm. I mean, the there arm. are cybernetic arms, but like, but not that advanced. Not that advanced. It's not like Bucky from uh, uh, Captain America. It's not like yeah, vibranium or whatever. Yeah, we are getting way off track though. Sorry, <laughs> going back to Planet of the Apes, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, to be more specific. Oh, and once again, we want you to remember this is sponsored by Orangutape. When the regular tape doesn't get it done, call Orangutape. The monkeys will get it done, baby. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> oh, my. We'll edit this out. I regret everything. <laughs> But no, um, where were we? Where were we? At? Where were we? We were talking about uh, the disease. We were talking how about we got how they, s- they actually set up the yeah, games. like how the the, uh, the monkeys got smart. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna bother saying apes. But, I'm just gonna say monkeys. Yeah, like whereas whereas um, Caesar had the one twelve pass through his blood. Um, the other ones got it straight up through their. I think breathing. Like, Maurice the uh, the orangutan was. Uh, he was a circus ape, so he learned sign he knew that sign. way. Which some is, people call him Maurice. Which, like, can can they actually do that? Like, can you actually teach them? Yeah, sign? I think you can teach some monkeys or apes or whatever sign language. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I don't know if they really know what it means. More yeah, like it's like what I'm they know like if they go like that means food. Yeah, maybe. But I mean, you know, you can excuse some minor plot holes like that because it's a sci-fi movie yeah but but yeah so they set up him by being a circus ape and koba a a lab ape and the other ones i mean apes are already intelligent creatures yeah probably the most intelligent maybe mm -hmm. and when when caesar gives them the 113 you see before they actually end up breaking out of the place i don't know how much time actually passes because it doesn't say, but you see him in the facility uh, teaching them sign language along with uh, Maurice. So he could have taught them a little bit of communication before they all ended up breaking out and running off into the city. But I feel like that that whole thing is handled... It's It was handled as well as it could have without being too long of a movie, you know? I think also a lot of it... I don't know if this is how ape culture is, but, like, if I'm an ape and I see, like, 10,000 apes following another guy, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to follow that same ape, too. Yeah. Especially with how Caesar used his wits over uh, Rocket's brawn, I guess. Mm-hmm. He lured him out 
freed what was it buck i think the the big let's call gorilla. him what he is prince kong prince kong yeah baby kong baby kong yeah <laughs> and he got him as hustle basically or muscle yeah hired muscle hired muscle yeah and he was like look i've outwitted you through my smarts now bow to me now you're my b- yeah. bit, you know whatever <laughs> but and then he teaches him humility and he teaches him how to you know yeah and he doesn't keep apes. on rubbing it in no he doesn't he, treat him bad like he just he's like i'll help you. it's like you know i'll still respect you just you know you gotta learn to respect you're, i'm your boss now yeah and then rocket actually handles it pretty well uh mm-hmm. he goes he's like one of the top guys for caesar yeah uh, we started the next movie but we didn't get to finish it but in dawn he's uh he's actually he's actually pretty close to uh caesar and so is maurice and koba at that point sadly baby kong d- spoilers did not survive <laughs> past the rise of the planet of the apes listen those 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 types of gorillas that look like king kong they really just need to stop going into cities because they're just going to keep getting gunned down gunned down by go. something that's in the air uh-huh yeah for real but um it wasn't the planes that killed the beast it was beauty that killed the beast uh-huh a beautiful dream. No, I'm pretty sure it was the play. A beautiful dream. <laughs> and that that'll be an interesting one to go over one day. Peter Jackson's King Kong, the, the official, official movie. movie. And then if we ever do the gaming podcast, we can do Peter Jackson's, Jackson's King Kong, Kong the, the official, official video game, game of, of the, the movie. Of the, yeah, the movie. Oh, the movie. Yeah, that'd be that'd be that a fun is a one. Mouthful. My gosh. Why does it have to have? Like, why not just be like King Kong the game? I don't know. Because. They really wanted to, I, because Peter Jackson worked with the actual game design, I think, as well. But, you know, I think they just wanted to get across the point, hey, this is a decent movie tie-in game, okay? It's. A, I mean, you know what, never mind. I'm just going to not bother. We're going to go yeah, down another rabbit hole. We're going to go down so. rabbit hole, yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad of a game. But, um, getting to Caesar's, like, development as a character because you know he's the main focus well, can, I, can I say one thing about a human yeah probably my favorite actor was uh will's dad oh striker uh, no no will's dad the one that oh, has yeah. alzheimer's yeah i like how he goes from no he plays it off pretty well mm-hmm. going from alzheimer's to cured back to alzheimer's mm-hmm. I, thought, it... I thought he did a pretty good job of it yeah he did like he made it very believable and it's like kind of it's really sad yeah. Especially if you have known somebody who goes through that. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Back to Caesar being the main <laughs> character. Um, I really don't think uh I really don't think this movie would have been the same if they hadn't gotten Circus to play him. Cause I don't know anyone else that could really pull off that much emotion in a dot suit. Like you see him like as weird as it sounds, mature as a character. Because he's tired of getting treated like a pet, even though his his owner keeps telling him, you're not a pet, I'm your dad. But he keeps getting treated like a pet. Yeah, exactly. So, he does a good job of like showing off all those emotions like hope, sadness, uh, despair, and all this stuff. And really, most of what you're getting is like, I mean, he does the movement and everything, but most of it is all just conveyed through Andy Serkis' face. Yeah, they intentionally, I think for this movie and the King Kong movie, mm-hmm. they actually put a thing on his face where it would track his face. Yeah. So the emotion on his face is what yeah, would be portrayed it on the screen. Yeah, it wouldn't any other way. Yeah, because I, I knew they did it for King Kong, but I'm pretty sure they did it for this movie too, Like, you know, because obviously he plays Kong. Mm-hmm. He, Not the he, current Kong, but Peter Jackson's Kong. Actually, fun fact for you, I didn't know this till today, but you know the guy in the new Kong movie that has a kid? And he's like, he's writing letters to his kid every day or whatever. Yeah. That actor. Mm-hmm. He actually is the body of Kong. Is he really? Yeah, that's the guy in the green suit or the dot oh, suit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. That is really cool. Sorry. But, no, no, that that's actually cool. Yeah, we're going to have Piece a little of section truth. of the show called um, Monkey Time. Fun facts. <laughs> fun facts about monkeys. <laughs> fun fact about monkeys. There well, is for, no for orangutan. <laughs> Yes, there's no orangutan. We are not officially sponsored by anyone. That if there is an actual company out there called Orangutan, 
we're sorry. We'll cut out this in post. Uh, we had, we're we going to pull the, the was that rot you had, the rot of fair use or whatever. A copyright thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But, but brand deals actually are very tricky. And Well, no, we did our research. We looked it up. Okay. We did. We looked up a So if you claim to be them, you're lying. Exactly. You made it up right after we announced this video. Exactly. And we will fight in a court yeah, of all law. All two of you who come up with this idea, we will find you. The two of us will find you and we will sue you. <laughs> we will sue you for all you're worth. Yeah. You may be a millionaire. We might be screwed over, but you know. <laughs> well, if we can't beat you in court, we'll beat you another way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But, so, where, where, but, where, 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 so who... Nate, all right. What's up? So since we're doing a movie podcast, we can do little questionnaires. I'll ask you a question, and you can ask me a question. Just be a little section. Okay. I know that's what we've been doing the whole time, but specific questions now. Mm -hmm. Nate, who is your favorite character in the movie besides Caesar? Hmm. Uh. I I think it have to be. I mean, Will has like good at like. Out of the humans, it's probably Will or the dad. Because, you know, the dad, at, at the end of his whole arc thing, he kind of just accepts it. He's like, hey, son, just stop trying to, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's like, I'm ready. Yeah, it's like, I'm ready. Just let it happen. And, and, and you know, I kind of, you know, in a way, I, like, I res like, respect that in a way because he was just content, I guess. But... Will is more of a... He's not like a villain, but at the same time, he was the thing that was holding Caesar back. But he also taught Caesar how to be human, essentially. Um, So, I guess... I, I, I don't think I, I would say he's a villain. No. I think he was just ignorant mm -hmm. of the fact that Caesar wanted to, like, be treated, like, as equal mm -hmm. as a human would be. Yeah. And... Uh, and when and at the end he's like Caesar is home, he finally understands. He's like he is so much more than just a pet, you know. Yeah, or even just like my buddy. Mm -hmm. Like he's a leader of a whole group. Yeah, but out of the apes, uh, besides Caesar, I think Koba, because especially in the second movie, he definitely gets a lot more like screen time. But it's just the it's just the fact that like Koba himself isn't really in the wrong because i mean well, he is technically but like he has a point you know to distrust humans because he was poked and prodded all his life in a lab and he saw the bad side of humans so that makes him pretty relatable i feel like in terms of an ape character and and vice versa for you which character like you know which what is your favorite character out of out of the well, uh, categories i think we know my the 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 human one is probably the dad, mm -hmm. and probably Rocket is my favorite ape. Mm -hmm. Or if it's not him, it's probably Baby Kong. Baby Kong. I'm a sucker for like the big gorillas. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, Harambe. Oh my gosh, we are not going there. <laughs> Harambe is long gone. Yeah, well, I'm just saying. I mean, like, there's a lot of people out there who are still hurt. Getting back onto the topic at hand. But um, but I think like the other effects were pretty good in it, like the explosions and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like they look pretty real. I mean, I've never seen an explosion like that in real life, but I mean, I assume that's kind of what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And also, I just gotta say, for this movie, it's surprising how well it's actually shot. You yeah, know? I agree because like, it, it has its own kind of tone to it, which is wild. I think. Yeah. Uh. I, like, there's not much, like, you can really do in a city like that because a lot of things look the same pretty much. Mm -hmm. But I think they did, the, like, a good with what they could do. Like, they do, a, like, a lot of center kind of shots. Yeah. Like, they, they center in on the character a lot. Or they do a lot of close-ups with Caesar because I think they want you to, you know, see the emotion and expression on his face. And, and you kind of you kind of see through his eyes. Yeah. Movie. And, man, some of those shots, when it, like, gets up close to his face, they look... Like, especially in the next few movies, they look very real. Like, it's kind of scary. Yeah. But that one shot of when um, Jacobson or whatever his name is goes into the facility and he's looking around like, where is everybody? And then the camera pans 
and you just see all those monkeys or apes standing above him, staring down on him. That is freaking horrifying. That's, I would be scared to death. I would be life. booking it out of there. I'd be like, And nope. somehow, he makes it out of that. Yeah, that's... How in the world, man? Because if that was, like, real life, I'm pretty sure they would have jumped on him and just, like, beat the crap out of him. Yeah, and then like, when he gets to his death, he's, like, trying to get him to help him. Mm-hmm. After he just tried to slaughter all of them. Yeah, I'm like, what are real. you doing? Yeah. But I will say, he is, he is probably my biggest problem with the movie. He just feels like a big, like, stereotypical CEO guy. Yeah, the rich, like, the rich bad guy. Yeah, and uh, I'm just... I mean, but some movies, it works, but the thing is, he didn't have a personality besides yeah. evil rich guy. And plus, I mean, he didn't really have that big of a role anyway, so it's not, it's not really even, like, that big of an issue. Yeah, I mean, I feel like... Dodge. Is that his yeah, name? Yeah, Draco. Think... He had more of like a thing going. Man, I'm glad you remember that because I didn't. I was like, it's Draco, but I can't remember what the character but it's Dodge, yeah, Dodge pretty sure. Yeah. Right? But he had more going for him than he did. Oh, I, th- I think just uh, Dodge had more uh, personality to him. Although, I mean, he was a sicko, you know, for torturing apes. apes. He didn't really have much out of that, but he definitely had personality. I wonder if there is actually a place in San Francisco which I believe the movie is set in, mm-hmm. where they actually have like a thing for apes like that. That's a, that's what I was wondering, because I've heard people of having like primates as like pets before, but like, is that just like a, is that like a thing that you can do? Is there like... You can tell we did that? not do our research before. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of curious about that. If you're watching this and you know, let us know. Yes, comment below, or if you want to do the research for us, uh, <laughs> just just... Tell us, you know, and also I would like you all to take for right now. This is an audio only uh, podcast because, well, we don't really have a camera great s- setup or, oh, yeah. or really a place for a camera to begin with unless we get mounted cameras. So for right now, enjoy this lovely thumbnail I've made by saving an image off Google and going into MS Paint. And it was a lot harder it. than it sounds. Yes. For some reason, it kept screwing you up cannot on. save you we cannot save we literally <laughs> took i think 30 minutes on this thumbnail i'm not even kidding we could we finally figured out how to make the words a little bigger on orangutan at uh, orangutape but yeah. we had to write sponsor uh-huh. i want you to know that's nathan's writing on listen, paint listen man i'm doing the best i can here <laughs> hey listen we're not here to be a five-star studio oh no, this is for fun we're just doing it for fun heck yeah that's what matters but but yeah, if you have any recommendations or helpful hints, mm-hmm. leave them in the comments. And in order, and in terms of doing these movies, it might be best to like you know start out with this one, take a break for a while, touch on something else next, and then you know do these like every other month, so that way we can keep things fresh and not just talk about ape movies the entire. Oh, I was going to say, we'll do this one, then Peter Jackson, King Kong, <laughs> then we'll do the next one, then we'll do Mighty Joe Young. And What's then, that? you never seen Mighty Joe Young? No. I guess you're too young. No. I was born in 03. I think it came out in the 90s. Which, I was born yeah. in the 90s, but like... Because you're old. Well, yeah, but see, I remember watching it when you were like, not even born yet. <sighs> you really are an old man. Yeah. Surprised me right. hobbling around. You were born king. when Return of the King came out. That is true. That is wild. I was a newborn. A newborn babe. I love that movie. Yeah. I'm so happy I was born in the year of that well, movie. Well, we will hopefully eventually get to covering those When we movies. get to Lord of the Rings, it's literally going to be like a five-hour podcast. It's going to be five hours. <laughs> like combined, all of them. It's going to probably have book things in there, too. Oh, jeez. We're going to put time We're going to have to do book podcasts, too, you know? Oh, no. I didn't sign up for that one. <laughs> 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 Movies, games, and books. Oh, gosh. I guess we would have to call it the Middle Mac Multi Podcast. That actually has a nice ring to it. Or multicast because it's like different. Multicast. That is nice. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep that in the in the uh, archives for now. But um, we're not doing books. I just want to clarify. Yes, we're not doing. <laughs> we might do like maybe music or something. I don't know, but we'll talk about various things. The the gaming podcast will probably be more chill than this. But for this is strictly movies. Yeah, probably and probably be like on. I don't know if we'd be doing games like this here. 
Yeah, no. Uh, more like Discord, probably. Disc yeah, gaming stuff is probably going to be done over Discord. While we're playing an actual game, you know, or we'll have footage. Yeah, for you we'll, to watch. we'll have background footage and stuff going on there. See, it's hard to do movie footage because copyright. So this is why you get this wonderful. I mean, I could do movie footage. I just have to record a crap ton of. Um, I just have to screen cap a crap ton of uh, yeah. footage off the, uh, off the computer. And that's a lot of work. We. And a lot of and a lot of space on the computer that I don't want to take up. Yeah, really, we do it for like one podcast. Then you'd have to delete it all. We'd have to upload it and then delete it. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, so is there anything that like really sticks out to you in this movie in particular? Like one thing that just like you know was like, hey, that was really cool, or that was kind of weird, or anything. I think it's cool. I think I read it, or you might have told me about it. But, like, you know, you said all the actors, like, practice walking, like. Mm -hmm. So, like, the fact that a lot of those are actual people, mm -hmm. like, doing the movements. Yeah. Because it could have been easy just to, like, you know, animate a monkey or ape walking. Mm -hmm. But they decided to go all in, you know. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. I think just about all the monkeys are all background people using those actual, like, uh, stands like on their front uh, for both their arms. They use their back legs and they use these stands with their hands to hobble around like an actual ape. And that is really cool. And he even, the guy who coordinated all that, even taught Andy Serkis how to do it. Yeah. But I'll say this about the movie. Like, if Andy Serkis did not get to do a good job, this movie would not have been good. Really? I mean, because it all I mean, depends on Caesar. It. Uh huh. Because, like, he's the one you're rooting for through the movie, mm -hmm. well, I guess. I mean, it depends on who I you mean, are. it's not like the script was that bad. It's just, you really need that. It wouldn't that... have been an entertaining movie if Caesar was a bad acted character, I feel Yeah, like. you really needed Circus to... You really needed it. Like, I feel like even more than the movement, it was just the his emotion on his face mm -hmm. that really sold the character. if you're not making us feel for the character, then what's the point, you know? Yeah, it, it's kind of like... Say you have a movie with a mute character, uh huh. Like they have to be able to act with their face, mm hmm. Or especially like with like voice acting and stuff, like <laughs> I don't think you can voice act if you're mute. Well, no, I'm saying like with voice acting, you have to, it's all in your voice, oh, you so you to, have to be very expressive. Your, your voice is your character, but for most of the <clears throat> movie, uh, Circus does not talk, yeah, it's just like maybe five words in the movie, yeah. But that does lead into one thing I wanted to talk about that. That scene where he first speaks is one of the coolest scenes out of, like, any movie I've ever seen. Yeah. Because, like, you know, no. you have, yeah, you have, like, the anticipation, like, the build-up and everything. You see Dodge come out there with that freaking electrical nightstick that he's always carrying. Yeah. And he gets the advantage on Caesar at first, and everyone's watching, you know, and Dodge's partner is setting up in the, in the tower thing to, like, trank him. And then Caesar, like, disarms him, grabs him by the arm, and, you know, you get Dodge recreating that iconic line from the first one. And then Caesar just looks him dead in the eye and just screams no. And then it's like, at that point, you realize, holy crap, he isn't just like a, like, he isn't just a normal ape anymore. Like, a, he's not just He has a, ascended. Yeah, he's pretty much become a human ape. Actually, thing. probably more intelligent than us humans. I mean, I guess if he if he outlived them. I mean, he outsmarted the freaking what was it, Coast Guard? I can't remember who it was. Yeah, that, that's that's another thing. How in the world did the police of San Francisco not be able to like handle it? Handle hey hey apes? suspension of disbelief. Yeah. Also, yeah, another thing, fights always end up on the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, no matter what. Literally everything. Like, if there is the Golden Gate Bridge, it's going to get destroyed somehow. It's either going to have a fight on it, or it's going to break, or anything. I've We've seen enough movies to know where this goes, and it's always going to topple down. Because nothing like destroying a good old monument, all right? Yeah. There is a no, there's also a lot of Easter eggs in this movie. Mm -hmm. Or, like, little, you know, shout-outs to other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, just the one I remember the most is 
a little shout out to Lord of the Rings. I know we've mentioned it a couple times, but when Caesar bites the guy's finger off. Oh, yeah. I'm well, sure it's a reference. I wonder if it is, because it seems like if it isn't, then it's, it's very coincidental. It's the same finger. It is. If it's not, then it's very coincidental. Yeah, well, I'm saying it now. It's a reference. <laughs> but um, there, was other th- there were other things in there, too, though. Yeah, like one I'm of trying my, to remember. One of my favorites being like it's like you know NASA launches their first ship to Mars, which I think was the original goal of the humans in the uh, first movie. Yeah, they don't succeed. They got put in cryo sleep, and then it's like later on you hear it's like oh the Mars crew has vanished. Yeah, and I think they end up waking up in the first movie, or at least that one guy does, the main character of the first. Yeah, they games. wake up in the first movie. And he thinks it's been, like, a couple of days. Uh Uh-huh. But then, like, spoiler, you find out it's been, like, a thousand years. Mm Mm-hmm. And... And they never went to Mars. And it could also be a reference to the Tim Burton Planet of the Apes. Yeah, because he was... I mean, because Mark Wahlberg was an astronaut, too. Yeah. We're gonna have to get, we're gonna have to watch that one at some point. Yeah, so it yeah. is so weird. I, I mean, this is for underappreciated movies. I don't know if that's I would consider that an unappreciated movie. We're starting out with an underappreciated. Movie. Like we said, the Lord of the Rings maybe will happen one day. Lord of the Rings will happen way just, down the line. Probably it's, it's going to be a while. We're going to get through some uh, more. I'd say different movies first. Yeah, like obscure. Mm-hmm. Movies. Or ones that people don't talk about. I mean, I'm not saying this movie. These movies are like very obscure, but like you don't hear people talk about them very much. Yeah, no. Which is weird because they made good money. That I'm. Yeah, aware that's of. the thing. They make good money, but then the, like, I think it was because when these movies were coming out, that's when like the Avengers. Oh yeah, that's when like the whole Marvel thing. Sorry, and, I said Avengers. Yeah, Marvel. In 2011, getting... Thor came out. Yes. And the first one still made good money from that I know of. Yeah, but the, um, and then, I think it's just people started getting really excited because I think it was 2012. And I think 20, I think Dawn was 13 or 14. And the Avengers so, was 2012. Let's see. Avengers was 2012. So at least Planet of the Apes had that year ahead of the Avengers. But at that point, Captain America and everything had already come out. Yeah, plus Marvel was releasing movies yearly, uh-huh. which I think kind of like made it where Which, these movies weren't at as. some point i definitely like to talk about the saturation of marvel stuff yeah let's just say this when we do get to marvel we will point out good things there are good things we, about we them. like the marvel movies yeah a lot. but we also this is also a critique channel so if you're like well, a i said hard, channel podcast if you're like a hardcore stan of like marvel movies this is not free we're well, big I mean, fans like we 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 grew up on these movies but we're also willing to point out their flaws. It's like this movie, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. It's a good movie, but I mean, there are some things I feel it could have been improved about it. Like, yeah, and there, there could have been more character development. Yeah, and like, especially with the villains. But I feel like you could say that about any movie. Yeah. You know? But, and like and like we said, the villains and stuff and the humans aren't the main focus. Uh, this might sound stupid, but sometimes I feel like in this movie, things like happen really fast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse that. But yeah, like I was saying, though, there are some things in this movie that aren't, like, the best. Yeah. Like, I'm sure, like, many, like, like we said, we're here to talk about just how it's underappreciated. Not that it's like, oh, this is a 10 out of 10 masterpiece that that you should examine and break down every scene, you know? Yeah, it's more like this is an 8.5 that people forgot about. Yeah. Pretty much. And then Don... I would say though, Dawn is actually a very good movie. Like Dawn definitely steps it up. War is good, but I don't think it's near as good as Dawn. Well, I uh, like the first couple minutes of Dawn. Yeah, before we had to. But then again, that's for later on down the line. Yeah. But I'd say like, I'd say summing up, you know, it's definitely a good movie. One that people should definitely go and revisit. And if if you, if you were kind of hesitant about monkey movies, then definitely give this one a try because it's definitely one of the best of the bunch. And, uh, yeah. So, you have anything else you want to say on it before we close up? Uh, it was a very good movie. Uh, it was everything I thought it would be and more. Nice. And if you ever struggle to keep something on your wall, don't forget, tape will keep it there. Just dial... That's right again, dollars. And find us at www.mmc.com. Um, uh,
dot com slash orangutate dot gov dot gov and you will and you will find a one percent discount on orangutate with a starting price of twelve thousand five hundred ninety seven dollars shipping cost twelve ninety nine you can get the bundle pack for thirty thousand dollars five hundred thirty seven cents i mean it's a 12 month supply so I mean, you can't go wrong you cannot go wrong literally the stuff will it literally okay so normal tape like sticks on for like what 10 minutes Oranga tape sticks on for like an hour it's so crazy like if you want that poster to stay on the wall for more than like 50 minutes Oranga tape is like definitely the way to go yes and their spoke the spokesperson of Oranga tape is a very good man maurice i know him he's a dear friend of mine well not a man exactly but whatever maurice what a bro what a bro so, Anyways, yeah. make sure to watch us next time on the Middle Mac multicast, yeah. where we'll tackle another movie. Yeah, Stay which, tuned to find out which one it is. At this point, we're going to have to brainstorm it and figure it out. No, dude, we're supposed to leave in the suspense. Okay. But we'll let you know. Follow. We'll give, like, we should do the thing like other things do, like, like you go on Instagram, like, put, like, little emojis and see yeah. if they can guess what the movie is. Follow me at The Real Ginger Boy to stay updated on instagram and what is your handle uh I think just seth mccrary i think it's s mccrary one or something it's something really confusing but just look up seth mccrary on instagram you'll find on instagram me you'll find you can promote each other <laughs> i don't know what you're gonna promote about me but okay <laughs> make sure to ch- check out nate's uh well he, whatever he does <laughs> i i make music I was about to say, that's what I was going to say, but I didn't want to like throw you under the bus. Be like, he makes music from time to time. I have a time. sound clown. F- uh, sound clown? Sound, sound cloud. Clown. Find it for yourself. It's not even, it's a hobby. It's not even to be taken seriously. I have nothing, but if you have questions about movies or well, something. Well, send up an email. How about that? I got an email. Well, I mean like a joint email for like the, the podcast. Yeah. If you have any questions about Lord of the Rings lore i can help seriously, you seriously though he, he will hook you up with loader lore i'm not even kidding but yeah that's gonna wrap up uh this first episode stay tuned for whenever we talk about the next movie and eventually we will get to dawn but we're like i said we're gonna space it out so that we can keep things fresh but yeah hope you all enjoyed and hope you all have a wonderful day see you peace